Hello everybody, my name is Brian Brettschneider. I am a seasonal forecaster here with the National Weather Service Alaska region. And we finally have some uh, extended outlook data for the month of February. It just came out today, and so we're gonna get that to you as fast as we can. And let's just go ahead and jump right in it. Now, first thing is people always wanna know where we're at on daylight. And since the, since the winter solstice, We've already gained almost an hour and a half of daylight in Fairbanks, an hour here in, Fair in Anchorage, and about 48 minutes in Juneau. So the days are getting longer, much faster. We're already gaining, you know, depending on where you are, three, four, five minutes a day. Now, as everyone knows, it's been cold lately. We started our statewide cold snap on December 4th or 5th, and it's going to run through today. Today's the last day of it, January 15th. So that's a solid six weeks. That's a pretty long cold snap. Um, and it's gonna warm up, not ridiculously warm, but it's gonna be very different than what it's been like for a while. So if you're tired of the cold, for whatever reason, uh, the end is near, okay? In fact, for the length of that cold snap, this is our departure from normal. So about you know, more than 22 degrees below normal for a six week period. That is absolutely incredible. Um, more than 17 and a half in this darkest blue. Everywhere is blue. Maybe not around Ketchikan, but everyone's been really, really cool. So this has been a, a not noteworthy so much in terms of the actual temperatures, although the, the 30 day running average temperature is the coldest 30 day temperature statewide since January of 2012, so 13 years. Um, but still, the, the length is really, really remarkable. How are we doing on sea ice today? Um, pretty good. We are you know, not quite 100,000 square kilometers above normal, and it's almost to St. Paul. Uh, the Alaska Sea Ice Desk thinks it might reach St. Paul here within a few days before retreating back in a southerly flow. So that would be really, really uh, early, uh, much below normal sea ice for the western part of the Bering Sea. And then this is just, this is like a 20 year retrospective. If you want, stop, try to zoom in, look at each individual year, but every year since uh, 2005. Uh, how are we doing on snow? This is a, what we call the snow water equivalent, our SWE values. Um, I, as cold as it's been and, and as snowy as it's been in spots, we have a lot of areas that are actually below normal for their, uh, their water content in their snowpack. So this is if you melted the snow, how much water would there be? Would there be above or, or below normal amounts? Um, now this is, old, this is about five days old, so it hasn't kind of caught up to a lot of the precipitation that's fallen south of the Alaska range, but still much of the state is running behind where they should be for this time of the year. All right, so here we go, extended guidance. What do we got coming up? All right, so we got uh, Mr. Groundhog or uh, Mr. Magic 8-Ball or Miss Magic 8-Ball. Okay, so first thing we're gonna look at is what we call our week two outlook. So this is our days eight to 14. So this is gonna be for the January 23rd through 29th period. And not a lot of blue on this map like there's been for quite a while. We got below normal in Southeast above normal for the northwestern half of the state. So a big, big change from what we've been experiencing. In fact, this is about a three month plot of what each of these map maps look like each day, how, compared to how much blue and orange there is on it. You can see for, for weeks, every day, these maps had a lot of blue and a lot of dark blue on it. But here in the last few days, we've flipped the switch. And now we think we got, we're going into uh, an above normal warmer than normal period, okay? How about precipitation? Again, precipitation signals are always pretty weak, and these are the weakest you know, signals you can have. Near normal, it's just barely wetter than normal, barely drier than normal. I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. It could go either way. Um, again, for the last three months, it actually looked pretty wet for a while. Before that, you know, back in um, November, December, uh, pretty, th these maps looked pretty dry, um, but not a lot of uh, intense colors. Colors are pretty close to the normal. All right, so that's our week two outlook. Now let's think about our, uh, our full month outlook. 
And so we're just starting to get the data in for the month of February. So even though it's mid-January, we're already thinking about February. Um, and what, what, what are the um, uh, indications pointing toward? Well, this is what our call, this is our North American multi-model ensemble, right? So it's got a bunch of models from different North American agencies, US and Canadian primarily. And it's showing a pretty good warm signal for most of the state, with the exception of the Gulf of Alaska coast and down into Southeast. And then of course down into <clears throat> the Southern half of, of, uh, of Canada. But this is a big difference than, this is a bit different than what it looked like a month ago, if you go back and look at our video from last month. How about what the Europeans say? This is the, uh, the, the C3S. This is from the Europeans, the Brits, the French, some Canadians, Germans, uh, also Americans, Japanese, more Europeans, Australians. I guess this is everybody. And it basically has the same pattern, but not quite as warm across Alaska. So that's interesting. Only the North Slope and the West Coast is showing as being warmer than normal. Everywhere else is in that kind of middle category. All right, here we go. Here's our official outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, just posted today, only about an hour ago as I'm recording this. And it shows a little bit above normal, warmer than normal along the west coast for the entire length of the state, and below normal for the extreme southeast part of the mainland into all of southeast Alaska. This is a very, what we call canonically La Nina looking forecast. Near normal for most of the areas, but, but transitioning from warmer to cooler as you go from northwest to southeast. That's exactly what we see, but not really strong signals. Okay? Precipitation, the same pattern. Wetter from northwest to drier southeast. So wetter where it's warmer, drier where it's cooler. Again, a very typical La Nina, but with modest strength signals. And as always, again, precipitation signals are always going to be weaker than temperature signals. Okay, for the season, so the three-month period, February, March, April, kind of the same pattern, um, but for the North American Multimodal Ensemble, a little bit larger uh, near normal areas, not quite as above normal, close, but not quite. And then for the, the European, all the acronyms models blended together, looks very much like just the February alone. So most of the state, with the exception of the North Slope and the West Coast, and how do I do my hand here? The Aleutians, everywhere else is favored to be pretty close to normal for this three month period. And the official forecast from the Climate Prediction Center looks very much like that monthly outlook. Warm, somewhat above normal in the northwestern part of the state, below normal, southeast part of the state. So we're in a La Nina winter, and we'll talk La Nina in just a minute, but La Nina winters favor cooler the farther southeast you go and a little bit warmer the farther northwest you go. So a lot of weight is being put on that signal. Exact same with precipitation. Where it's warmer, it's going to be wetter. Where it's cooler, it's going to be drier. Now. That didn't work out this winter, okay? It just takes a couple of storms and you got cold air in place, you can get a lot of precipitation and a lot of snow. So keep that in mind again. But this is the general pattern that is expected. Okay, so that's our temperature outlook for February and for uh, the early half of this late winter, early spring. So now finally, let's talk about La Nina. And once again, January 8th, we are still in a La Nina advisory. Okay, La Nina conditions are where we're cool in the Central Pacific. And for the three month period of December, January, February, there's a more than 50% chance that will continue. Only a, uh, a small chance that we will be in so neutral and no chance of El Nino, but look at this over the course of the year. El Nino becomes much more favored by the time we get into the fall, 60% chance versus only about a 15% chance of a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back La Nina. Historically, this is about twice what we had to expect. So there is a signal that models are catching on to something that, that El Nino is gonna be favored coming up. But I wanna 
get into the weeds a little bit here. So when we talk about El Nino or La Nina, we're talking about the temperature departure from normal in this, this red box right here in the Central Pacific. Okay, and you can see it's all kind of shades of blue. So we are in a La Nina right now. Starting next month, starting in February, we're gonna change how we compute our La Nina status. We're not just gonna look to see are we above or below normal in this red box, but we're actually gonna now compare it to the entire tropical oceans globally, okay? Now in this case, all the rest of the tropics are significantly warmer than normal. So even though it's below normal here in the central Pacific, compared to the rest of the oceans, it's actually even more significant. And that's what we're gonna to try to capture in this new, what we call a relative oceanic Nino index. And that's gonna be rolled out next month. So again, we're gonna subtract out that tropical mean. So, you know, so what causes this below normal temperatures? Well, it's easterly trade winds, kind of blowing the surface water westward and cooler water from underneath, from underneath uh, upwells and fills that in. So, um, so the fact that we're below normal coming from eastward winds blowing from above normal waters in many cases is even more significant. So compared to the, again, the rest of the tropics, this is, think of this as being even more blue, okay? So the current way we think about it is this purple line and the new way we're gonna think about it is this green line. And this is, a, this is the last four years. Above this red line is El Nino, below this blue line is La Nina. Okay, so we're right over here right now. We're kind of barely in a La Nina, but the way that we're gonna calculate it moving forward is we're actually in a pretty strong La Nina. And we have been for most of the last 16 months, okay? So something to think about moving forward. Now, when we look at this chart, when this chart gets computed next month, all these red lines are gonna be lower and all these blue lines are gonna be a little bit higher. So there's a, it's a non-trivial change that's, that's coming up. Now, it's not always like this, okay? Usually these two lines are pretty close to one another, but starting in 2023, the global tropics really got out of sync, became much, much warmer than uh, areas in higher latitudes. And so uh, that difference between that Nino region and the global tropics was maximized. So that's something to keep an eye on. La Nina, expect La Nina to continue. Maybe next year, a week El Nino, but stay tuned for that. All right, that's what I got for you this, this time around. Uh, this is our, our, our monthly outlook. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop something in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer that. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll talk to you next month. Thank you.